Good afternoon. Thank you for stopping by this afternoon. My name is Jason Ehrlich. I've uh, been with Kinetics all a couple decades. Now we've got uh, our usual mix of crowds of consultants, architects, and uh, quite a few reps listening in uh, to talk about uh, the acoustics of our new clean line. Uh, also listening in and answering any questions is uh, Ben Hickey. He is uh, heading up both the home and room acoustics market. So feel free to type your questions and Ben will know when to interrupt an appropriate part of the presentation or at the very end we'll have all kinds of contact information and we can take questions then. Uh, so for those of you who may have missed it last month Kinetics had their biggest product line release ever and that is this clean uh, PET polyester acoustical products and we did a nice intro in that for those of you who got a chance to join into that if not we can make a uh, video available to you. But today we thought we'd follow up with that and talk about the acoustics of these products uh, because some of the numbers are rather large on the NRC side of things and it does require a bit of a dive. So today we're, we'll talk about what NRC is, how the standard works, and then we'll look specifically at both the panel products and how that differentiates us, particularly when it comes to NRC from the clouds and baffle products. And then lastly, we're going to look at some good old fashioned fiberglass and see you know, where does this PET fall in line uh, from an acoustics standpoint? You know, we know it looks good, but but how does it sound? So that what is NRC? Most designers I talk to given the AI presentations are very familiar with NRC. Uh, they're very comfortable with NRC. They understand that the larger the number, the, the better the absorption. Uh, but when we take a kind of a dive of really how it works, uh, some things get a little interesting. So very basically, it's just the measure of how well material absorbs reflected sound at specific frequencies. Now let's choke that little sentence down a little bit and make sure we understand reflected as well as specific frequencies. So let's really make this basic. If someone's speaking in their chair, there's gonna be the sound of their voice go past someone's ears and then hit a wall and come back as reflected sound. So when we're talking about NRC, it's a measure of how well a material takes that red line out. That's what we're doing. We, I think there is a misunderstanding out there in the world that somehow that these, that these absorbers can jump up and suck some of the green line out of the room. It, it doesn't do that, it can't do that. Um, the, uh, it's, it takes the only the reflected sound out of the of the room. That's it. The other thing it doesn't do, which is misunderstood, is it can't block noise from escaping the room. It's not good for that. Uh, that's where STC. You're probably familiar with that term comes in. Absorbers make very poor uh, mass parts of a, a part of, of a makeup of a room. So. The, the NRC, uh, it does follow an ASTM standard, C423. Uh, it hasn't changed a whole lot. And here you can kind of see a report from 1996. I just kind of threw it in here because it does a good job of highlighting the specific frequencies that make up NRC. But what they do is they take basically the percentage of the absorption of the red line that came off that thing out of the room. Uh, in other words, at, at this, I'm sorry, at the specific frequency. So if we look at 250, 500, 1000, and 2000, at 250, for example, it basically would remove 32% of that red line through this test methodology. To get the a single NRC number, we add all those frequencies together. Here we get 3.2. We divide it by 4, and you see we have an NRC of 0.80. Uh, a question comes up quite a bit, how come you can get above one? Isn't one 100%? One is 100%. It is removing all of that red reflected sound out of the room. How that, why that happens is has to do with the peculiarities of the test chamber. When you have a raised uh, absorptive element versus a flat floor, uh, that does some wave diffraction and that causes some of that uh, difference and they've kind of did a calculation to figure out what the how to come up with a constant 
and they discovered that there were other peculiarities in the standard that also had to be taken into account. So there is no real easy way to explain why you can get above one. Uh, they basically have agreed, we all understand the standard, we're all just going to agree one is 100%. So that's the very uh, basic explanation of why you can get above one. It's just keep in mind one is 100% of that reflected sound. Now this particular chart I took off from a competitor's uh, competitor's website, and I don't particularly have a problem with this, but I often tell architects that I think NRC is mostly for manufacturers to kind of beat their chest and say, we have a 0.95 NRC and our competitors only have a 0.80. And so here you can kind of see what they're claiming, and I don't disagree, the differences in these NRC numbers doesn't make a difference. And I would say, as long as you are apples to apples to apples, asterisks, 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 this, this is a fair chart. Uh, generally speaking, a panel is a panel, and they're going to, there's not going to be some miracle uh, version of their fabric at, uh, on top of the panel as maybe our top of the panel. Now, there are different ways to make those panels where some of that magic can come in. First kind of apple to keep in mind is how was it mounted? Uh, there's a different ASTM standard that covers how these panels are mounted. 95% of all the tests you see out there for NRC is probably A-mounted, which means it's basically 72 square feet of the absorptive materials laid on a concrete floor, which I find kind of fascinating. Think about that. We are judging these products of these different NRC numbers based on how 72 square feet of material perform in a lab. Uh, it is important to keep in mind that there are all kinds of different mounting types and typically uh, type A mounting is going to be the worst uh, performing because there's no airspace behind it. It's just literally the product laid on the floor. Uh, I can say that these are kind of the more common ones that we see mounted. Uh, type B is basically adhering the acoustical uh, element to the floor. Uh, type C, you do see, and that's where they'll take a product and then they'll add some kind of absorptive material behind it. Type D is they will mount continuous wood strips to create an airspace behind uh, the absorptive product. Type E, quite common when you see for drop ceilings. They'll test how well it blocks noise uh, with that airspace behind the, uh, the, for the product. Uh, type F, you'll see the test report will define what it is. Type J we're going to talk a little bit about today, that's basically a mounted from, from the deck. And, you know, this is a competitor's product, and I'm not going to, I'm not trying to lay fault with them whatsoever. I'm just saying, make sure when you're comparing your apples that you are seeing what you're seeing. A, a sales representative could come in and say, hey, this particular product has an NRC of 1.00 and they wouldn't be lying. They might leave out the fact that there's absorptive material behind it and that it by itself at one inch thick is only an NRC of 0 0.40. And again, not laying fault with the, with this particular product. They're very open. They, they don't, they're not trying to pull the wool over any eyes, but if you as a, as a specifier don't understand the differences of how these are mounting, this might not make a whole lot of sense to you. So let's talk a little bit about putting airspace behind the absorptive material. And this is our PET, this is our panel. It starts at 3 8 inches thick. Now there's no magic sauce here. You can't expect that a 3 8 inch thick material is gonna perform the same, same as one inch or two inch material as well. But what you can do is put some airspace behind it. So here we see the exact same panels at 3 8 of an inch thick, right flat on the floor, has an NRC rating of 0.3. But if we put just two inch spacers on the floor, we can raise that up to 0.55. And what you'll see happening is there's a manipulation of the wavelengths and it's able to kind of push the lower, uh, lower wavelengths, uh, longer wavelengths, manipulate those. And that's how you're getting that kind of performance boost. And there you see going from two inches to four inches, you get another you know, tenth. So you're, you're kind of losing that effect really quick because it just doesn't have the ability to affect those lower wavelengths more. When we talk about baffles and clouds, and we'll just say spaced object absorbers to steal a phrase, NRC is probably not the best way to look at that. They do offer J-mounting as part of the NRC standard, 
what the what the problem with J mounting is it's designed for things to be hung from the ceiling but spaced close together. In NRC, you've got to be very cognizant when looking at these reports as what's exposed in the room because the face of the of the material is what does the absorption. But I will tell you, don't take our word for it. We like our partners at Riverbank because they're kind of fighting the good fight too. And from the test report that we did for these products, you can kind of see highlighted there, there is no standard for when you space these things apart. You don't want to look at it uh, from a mounting type of A or E. There is no standard for it. And that's where we can kind of get into some problems. For example, from that same report, again, we love our partners at Riverbank for trying to bring the, the truth to, to, to us, is depending on the methods you use, uh, you can get an NRC of 0.25, you can get an NRC of 0.35, you can get an NRC of 0.75. Uh, now, in our 20 minutes today, I don't want to get into the, what all the differences are between all these things, but it has to do with how much of that face is exposed to the noise uh, to the noise source. And the, this highlighted part is the, is the thing to really pay attention to, especially this sentence here. This method is favored by some material manufacturers since it yields very high NRC figures, but does not provide a fair comparison with other ceiling tile or wall products. And Riverbank basically says that's probably not what you should do. It's just for comparison. All right, so what can we do? What is a fair comparison? Well, that's where savings comes in. And what savings are very basically, it's just a measure of absorption per unit. We're not looking at 72 square feet of material in a room on the floor or mounted in a certain way. We are actually trying to break it down and say, what does this unit do? And there's actually a couple different ways we can kind of break that up. We can look at total absorption in the test chamber, or we can look at absorption per object. Even under those, we can kind of even do finite. So as a measure of square meters of lab space, what was the absorption at these different frequencies? There's your saving units. What about uh, how much absorption in that total chamber from the uh, from number of savings units? I'm sorry, that's per savings per square meter, that's savings overall. I think more useful are these absorptions per object. Uh, here's square meters of material, and that's how much absorption you're getting out of it. But I think the best one to use is honestly savings per object. And you don't have to worry, it's saying this particular product itself, one of them at 100 hertz, sucked out 1.63 dB of sound. And then you can kind of start doing some of the math. Now, I don't expect, uh, many architects when designing most spaces to sit there and count all these things up. Just trying to bring out the, the idea that you have to be kind of careful. Just don't throw NRC around because again, it's really a measure of what 72 square feet of material does, not necessarily how it's going to act in your space. So here's our conundrum. Uh, what do we do? All of our competitors are using these really high NRC values. Right, so if you go to our website right now, you're going to see that that uh, that K Arrow Baffle has a quote unquote NRC of 0.75. You're going to see that our K Pergola Baffle has a 1.25. Our K Cloud has 1.3, and then this like the K Bow because of the way the shape of this thing is, it can trap all these nice uh, air um, noise pockets in here. You get a 1.90. Well, the fact of the matter is, again, this is made up of PET, which is not as good per cubic inch as fiberglass. So how do we talk about this and still get specified by people who are trying to compare us to competitors, uh, but yet be fair to make sure the acoustics work? Well, we're gonna have what we call the kinetics compromise. And that is on our newer products, and we will build this throughout our site, uh, is we're going to try to give you a nice analysis here and kind of say, look, yes, here's your 1.90 NRC because that's what you have to compare us to our competitors. But here's kind of how that thing works. It's a good high frequency absorber, not so much in the low. And what we're gonna do is take the best of this presentation and add a link right here to, to these different styles of testing to try to explain to people, not pull the wool over anybody's eyes. And this is how this works. So turning that, the page a little bit, when an when a architect calls up and wants to talk about help with their room, my, my, my first question is generally from a scale of one to 10, 
you know, how important are you, the acoustics in the space? And, and do you have the budget to match uh, those, those acoustic desires that you have? Uh, it might make a little more, more sense if I kind of bring some projects in here. They're going to have a range, right? I would say a dog kennel, the acoustics don't matter. You want to you want to take down the reverberation, but you don't really care how so. Versus all the way here on this extreme, the Sydney Opera House, well, you know, that's gonna they're going to want to have the best acoustics they can possibly have. So on that scale of 1 to 10, if they say 7, 8, 9, 10, I'm going to say, look, I will talk to you about some of the principles, but you really, really, really need to talk to a physical consultant, period. Um, you, because they're just gonna look at things a lot differently than even what we're covering today. If it's on that low end, I would say, you know what? You can probably use NRC to talk about these types of projects because you're just really just trying to knock down uh, frequencies that the NRC covers. What about the rest of this big green area? where NRC maybe is not the best way. Well, I'm gonna to try to prove that to you. And I'm gonna say, when acoustics matter, NRC doesn't. Uh, strike one, let's say do the math. Um, here we will bring back that chart that we looked at before. And as, as I mentioned, anything above one is still 100%. The problem is when you're doing this math and you add this number, this number, this number, and this number, and divide by four, you get to use all those numbers above one. So that can move your NRC numbers up quite a bit. Um, we have a lot of products where this tests out at a 1.2 or a 1.4. Again, you can't take out any more red than what's there. You can only you can only manipulate what's available to manipulate. So right there is kind of strike one that you can actually get a you can kind of pump that number up artificially. Strike two, and you know, do you hear what I hear? Well, the human ear is actually uh, kind of tuned to higher frequencies. And what we're seeing here is the noise criterion charts, uh, which basically tells you how quiet to build certain rooms like hotels or studios. But what I want to draw everybody's attention to is our uh, threshold of, of hearing. And what this is saying is that at 2000 Hertz, we're going to hear about three decibels the same as at 63 Hertz is to 35. And the problem with uh, going back to the math, when you look at how NRC works, it doesn't weight the frequencies this way. It's just a simple divided by four. So you don't know if you're getting a panel that's good for low frequencies or high frequencies. And even if you did, you don't know if it's taking into effect the fact that our ear hears higher frequencies much better than it does low frequencies. Strike three, for those of you who are familiar, there was a band in the 90s, R.E.M., and they had a hit song, What's the Frequency, Kenneth? And this is probably the biggest damage of NRC that, that I can think of. If you look at the full spectrum of human hearing, which goes to about 20 hertz up to 20,000, and here you can kind of see some frequency ranges. When we pop up the testing for NRC, you can kind of see that if you're doing anything in music, if your acoustics matter at all, NRC numbers really don't help you. In fact, I would argue that they're really kind of good for human voice, uh, those restaurants, the dog kennel, uh, and that's really about it. If you're trying to build anything at all uh, where the acoustics do matter, I, you know, NRC might be a start of the discussion, uh, but really shouldn't be the end. And to kind of drive that point home, if we take a look at building an auditorium and we say from low frequencies to high frequencies, this is the ideal line that you're shooting for. Well, let's start building that auditorium. The first thing we're gonna do is add some materials. Well, there's your building materials. Believe it or not, unpainted drywall, unpainted CMU is a little bit absorptive. Uh, soft goods like seatings and curtains, also good, particularly on the high frequencies. So you can see we haven't added one acoustic product and we're still kind of halfway home to this point. Well, if we look at that good old fashioned hard side test that we've been looking at, this is our fiberglass panel. This is kind of that frequency curve. You see good high frequency absorption, not so much in the lower zones here. So we pile that into that room. It's just not a good scenario. You've got too much absorption here and not enough. When we compare that to say our Versatune panel that we custom make, we do put some magic into that product. It's a nice flat curve and we add that product to that space, you can see it's a lot better fit. Now, again, we can add other materials that are better on the low end and take even more off the high end and even get that straighter. And I think that's a good point. You always want to do a mix and match of materials when the acoustics matter. But you can see that they it does make a difference which product 
that you look at. And if we only looked at NRC, and this will be my last knock on it, I promise, if we look at a one inch hard side panel versus our two and an eighth inch Versatune, and we look at those curves and I say, hey, look, they're both NRC 0.8, but this product and this product are very much different when we look at that, again, that NRC zone, and they're just, they're frankly, they're just not the same. So it does kind of matter what room materials are in there and what products you want. So that's to kind of conclude, the PET products have a place. They're great for uh, lower, low, where lower acoustics kind of matter. You're not gonna be able to tune a room like you are for these products. It's just, you're going to see inflated numbers of NRC. Our competitors are gonna do it. We have to kind of countersuit to keep up with them. We are trying to fight the good fight, however, and say, look, if you're just trying to do a hotel lobby and you're just worried about speech, feel free to put these beautiful, pretty uh, PET products in your space. If you're doing a high school auditorium, then let's go to that next level and start talking about you know, your frequencies and how that actually interacts in, inside your space. So with that, I'd like to thank you uh, for your uh, attention and uh, let me know if you have any questions. And um, while you might be typing some of those out, I would ask any consultants or people who you know have a passion for this kind of thing, I, I think the industry does need to start talking about this a little bit more. I think there is a, uh, there's a confidence in the design community that NRC is the beginning and end to acoustics. And I, and I, I think we've kind of laid out that it really isn't. And so I would love a uh, discussion on how we as an industry can kind of educate people on how room acoustics uh, can, be, can be better. Thank you. Jason, thank you. If, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to throw those up on the chat right now. We want to take advantage of uh, this opportunity while we have a few moments. And I guess uh, while we're while we're waiting for that to, to file in here, I, I think one thing too that uh, if anybody who's on here has worked in a in the home theater world and and especially nowadays that they're um, the, the the low frequency absorbers are really kind of the bread and butter of what a lot of people are looking for these days, which Kinetics is in current development of one that's. Uh, uh, we're going to be quite proud of once once it's all said and done here. Uh, you know, the NRC that we're getting off of those things is around a 0.2. Um, so if you've dealt in home theaters before, you're probably already very familiar with how useless that, that rating becomes and how sometimes you're looking for a product with the lowest NRC possible because you want to kill off that absorption in the high frequencies and the mid frequencies. I think they're going to be easy on you, Jason. I don't, I don't see anything, so, I, any, no, no activity in the chat right now. I, I did my best to try to keep it at 25 minutes, so I felt like I was kind of racing through there. So. <laughs> oh, here I am in the question zone. So uh, Amber says, Oh, great work, Jason. Thank you. I'd love to have access to this presentation, video, or slide deck as we have more people interested in the clean line. Uh, we, we'll definitely make it available. Um, sometimes it takes a few days. Well, I, we can get you the presentation right away. The recordings can take a couple, a couple bits. So. Yeah, this is one I would love the whole world to see. So. <laughs> Ben will tell you I'm an advocate of, of better acoustics and NRC is not my friend. <laughs> definitely, definitely. He's he's usually, uh, this is him being very kind, Frank, <laughs> in 20, 20 minutes worth of talking about NRC. I've, I've seen him uh, put the, you know, take the gloves off and and uh, not pull any punches. It's not, not necessarily a fan and, and, I, and I can't disagree. I'll go back to the early days when I was going out and giving AIA presentations and building code had changed for noise control for multifamily. And so the ar the architects were just desperate to learn what do I got to know about STC and IIC and all those fun things. And and I learned that, yeah, we had a we had a challenge and we had to educate that, hey, you need noise control. And I also learned that they they, oh, I'm very familiar with NRC. I know how to make a room sound good. 
kind of realize, oh, we so we have a, on one hand, we've got to educate on you have to use noise control. And on the other hand, we have to say, yeah, your room acoustics, you don't, we need to do differently. We need to do better. You're not necessarily treating it uh, the way you think you're treating it. So, Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think that's the harder challenge, actually. <laughs> All right, they're letting you get off easy, man. All right. It's, uh, <laughs> it's only one day to Friday. That's right. <laughs> they're either all in agreement or you may just made everybody mad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining us today. I do appreciate it.